Welcome to In The Workshop. This is a Stuart Sirius steam engine, part 3, completing the manifold modification. But before I start this, I'd just like to answer some viewers. Yes, I know that the exhaust pipe is horrible, but for me it serves a purpose. It's very useful to point downwards into a plastic container to collect the exhaust residue when it's running. So all the viewers who are very meticulous and comment on everything that I do, you will notice that I've removed the hideous exhaust pipe so I can get at the manifold. The top part, as I showed previously, is part of the banjo type fitting, and this small screw is just to stabilise the manifold. So here is the manifold on the bench. What am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to remove the blanking plugs first, and I'm going to fit a drain cock in the place of this one, and in this position on the manifold, I'm going to fit a Stuart Models displacement lubricator. First of all, I fitted this drain cock, then I remembered it's a faulty one from Stuart Models. They've had a bit of a problem with the tapers not mating up, and they leak really badly. So I won't be using that. The one that I finally use will be one with the union nut on the end. I'm doing a test fit of the displacement lubricator in the manifold bush, and it's obvious that it's going to need a shim washer fitting to get it in the right position. Before I accessorise this manifold, I need to drill out this piece of aluminium that someone's put in the end. It's a plug. Because originally there was a pressure gauge fitted in the end of this manifold. Don't forget this is a World War II generating set engine and the manifold was connected permanently to the boiler. There was no regulator between the boiler and the manifold. The regulator is built into the engine and it was convenient just to fit the pressure gauge on the end of the manifold. And the pressure gauge was just screwed into the end of the manifold and it was on its side. So now I have the option to fit a pressure gauge or just a blanking plug, and I'm going to go with the latter for the moment. This large thread was originally used to connect the steam engine to the boiler, but it doesn't look too good because it's not connecting the steam engine to the boiler. I'm going to modify this, but before I do that, I'm screwing a blanking plug into a brass nut, and in this clip, I'm fitting the brass nut into the three jaw chuck. It's possibly more accurate to hold the blanking plug by the threads. But when holding threads in chucks, you can't tighten them up very much, so I'm going to run the risk of this not being 100% dimensionally accurate by screwing it into a brass nut. This is not a precision part, it's just a blanking plug. And to profile this, I'm using my specially shaped round nose tool, and I grind this to shape to suit certain jobs. I bought this tool from Blackgates Engineering, and it was very cheap because it cuts to the right, not to the left. All I do is change the position of my tool post. I turned the outer diameter of this piece of brass in the chuck to nearly where I needed it to be. I used a centre drill first, followed by a quarter of an inch diameter twist drill, then a half inch diameter twist drill, and finally this reamer, which is just above half an inch in diameter. And the final part of the job was to take a really fine cut down the piece to make it exactly the right diameter to match the manifold's diameter. I then removed the tool marks using a piece of emery cloth and in this clip I'm showing that my hands are well away from the chuck. Once I parted off this small piece of tube, I reversed it in the chuck, slightly rounded the outer edge of it as you see here and when it fits to the manifold it looks okay. All I need to do now is use some Loctite equivalent retainer and fit the brass sleeve over the thread. I can't get this sleeve exactly the same as the manifold because the manifold is not true anyway as it's a casting. But this is near enough for jazz, rock and roll or country and western. In this clip I'm applying some Loctite 542 which is a hydraulic seal to both the drain cock thread and the lubricator thread. The drain cock fitted okay although the tap's at the bottom and I'm not too thrilled with that. But the displacement lubricator needed a shim washer. Once both the drain cock and the displacement lubricator were fitted to the manifold, it's time to put it back onto the engine, not forgetting the small screw at the bottom part. And the sequence was, loosely fit the manifold, fit the bottom screw, then tighten up the banjo union fitting. And as almost always, I'm using my Barco spanner for this, because no, it doesn't round the edges of the brass as you can clearly see. Because the jaws of this Barco spanner are much wider than the ones on a very small spanner, and being able to adjust the pressure of the jaws on the bolt head means that rounding nuts are a thing of the past. A drop of Loctite 542 on the blanking plug, and when that's in position, I think it looks okay. And now, just for Inspector Meticulous, who I'm sure is still watching to make sure that I do everything correctly, I'm refitting the hideous exhaust pipe. 
and as I mentioned earlier, this is currently very useful because it points down. And I just put the cap of an aerosol underneath it and it collects all the condensate from the exhaust. All that's left to do is get it ready for a steam test to make sure that the manifold doesn't leak. And also it will be useful because I need to steam test this boiler too. This is a very old boiler that I actually got with the engine. And looking at the fact that the outlet and the inlet of both the engine and the boiler have an unusual thread, I really think that this engine and boiler go together. So in the next video, which will be part 9 of renovating an old model steam boiler, this boiler will be supplying steam to power the Sirius. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.